Hoagland, one of the academic advisors with the School of Engineering Technology. Maybe you saw my other video for admitted students for the class of 2024. Here, I'd like to take you on a tour of some of our labs around the Purdue campus. Hi, uh, my name is Professor Eddie Effendi. Uh, I'm here to talk to you guys about Engineering 181. It's a gateway class uh, where all the student polytechnics uh, are learning about electrical and mechanical side, and I'm teaching the mechanical side. We are typically teaching the students about uh, the design aspect, uh, the manufacturing aspect, and the assembly and the quality. So overall, you guys will have an uh, overview about how things work in engineering from the design perspective, manufacturing, assembly, and quality. Okay. So the, the first two weeks, uh, everybody will, will learn about uh, design. So basically, the students going to uh, design something in the CAD software. Uh, and then another two weeks, you guys will be learning about manufacturing side. You guys are going to write coding uh, for specifically for these machines. Uh, and the students will also have a product at the, at the end. So this is kind of like the product. Uh, so for this, this is basically like a poster note holder. Okay, where you guys can put, uh, buy or get posted note, put it here. Or on the electrical side, you guys basically, you know, on the lab kit, you guys will can put your speakers here and uh, some circuit boards over here. So it's very universal. Okay, and not only that, you guys will have uh, a chance to write your own name here, uh, your initials over here. Uh, so in the end, it will look like this. Uh, where you guys will write your some initials, uh, so this will be yours uh, to have or to keep. Okay, uh, and then the last week uh, of the part, you guys will be doing some assembly and the quality. So right now it's doing the drilling operations. This we're gonna cut the back side of the part that's the roughing process then we're gonna do some finishing process So that's just half of the part, and now we have to flip it over. Excuse me. And now we're gonna cut the rest of the product. Hi, my name is Zach Schreiber. I am a graduate student here at the Purdue Polytechnic Institute. I graduated with mechanical engineering technology in May of 2018. I currently teach electrical courses for uh, freshman and sophomore level electronics courses. We are currently in the electrical fundamentals lab. As you can see around us, we have all kinds of electrical equipment in here that we used as a start. And then as you go through your courses, you'll use equipment like this and even greater equipment to build more in-depth electrical systems that will also incorporate with mechanical systems. So as you can see here, I have a little bit of a setup. I have an electrical motor running here based on the power. And you can use this running through a board, some kind of microprocessor, shield, um, whatever you want to call it. And then we can use that to program robots to do different things, integrate it with sensors, and these are projects down the line that you learn. Here you start with the basics, and then from that point on you can develop it to build large robots, sensors, uh, machining, things like that. One of the things that you can do in Engineering 181, just starting off, is you learn how to do basic circuits. So you'll build small circuits, like I have here on this breadboard, with resistors. You'll add power to it, and then you can measure the voltage, the resistance, the current, and that all plays a lot into different electrical systems and how, for instance, if you give a motor more voltage, it ramps up. And uh, another way too is you will program things like this. So for instance, if I flip this switch up, I've programmed this to move lights like this, and then as I move this to the left, it speeds up, and as I move it to the right, it slows down. 
And so this is just basic introductory to electrical systems, uh, programming, things like that. And as you progress through your career here in Purdue, you can learn how to integrate these things into larger projects such as robots, such as manufacturing machines, such as um, audio boards, things of that nature. And so it just depends on what course you decide to take with your career. But it all starts with the fundamentals, and then you get to build on it from there. Hi, I'm Richard Voiles. I'm a faculty member here in uh, the School of Engineering Technology. Um, I teach basic uh, electronic uh, in, in fundamentals as well as at the freshman level, as well as uh, robotics up at the senior level, and, and a number of things in between. And as you uh, may know that we do uh, programming in here in the Electrical Fundamentals Lab, uh, starting with project development where, where students get to build things like games, they get to build uh, small uh, electronic devices and learn the basics of uh, um, DC circuits where simple things that form the basis for sensors and motors and higher level control that we can translate from your freshman year right up through things like self-driving cars in your senior year. And now we've come over from the fundamental electronics lab to the robotics lab where more senior students apply those same basic capabilities and knowledge to much more complex devices such as this paper bot which we've developed not just for our senior class but also through our grad classes which combines mechanical elements with printable what we call 4D printing a fabrication of active robotic devices. Now this allows us to explore elements of movement of robots and we also have true robo industrial robotic manipulators which can also study the aspects and programming of manipulation, picking parts up and either assembling or delivering them to the, uh, for industrial applications. And we also have our senior design class where we do self-driving cars, the basic aut uh, autonomous navigation of vehicles where we study basic laser ranging sensors, um, inertial measurement units, and higher level programming of very competent um, art artificially intelligent vehicles. And this is our drone lab, where senior students in electrical, computer, mechanical, and mechatronic and robotic engineering technologies take that knowledge they learned in the earlier classes and apply that to sensors, to compu uh, computing and software development and navigation to create autonomous drones, in this case, for the electric power industry. This drone is for inspecting of smokestacks and even nuclear exhaust shafts in the nuclear industry. Hi, my name is uh, Professor Fred Berry. I'm a professor in the School of Engineering Technology here at, uh, at Purdue University, and welcome to our capstone lab. Uh, so what you're seeing, we'll be seeing here is kind of what the students uh, are working on right now. They're all kind of gone, so we can kind of sneak around and peek under the hood and see what's going on. The purpose of Capstone, it's a year-long experience that culminates at the end of their uh, career here at Purdue. It's so that they can have an industry-type experience on campus without having to leave the campus. And what we're going to do, I'm going to show you, is several different projects that we have going on. Yes, you are correct. We have built a garage inside of a building. The purpose of this is when power goes out, it's very difficult for some people to actually lift the garage manually. So what we're doing here is re-engineering the garage lift so anybody could actually pick this up. An elderly person, a child uh, on it. We also have a battery backup the students are built in. But this is kind of the innovative part is how they redesigned the pulley system. Uh, and this is for one of the companies that's a major garage door manufacturer that they're working with in order so that anyone, irrespective of age or ability, can now open the garage door without power. This is a pretty cool project right here, as they all are. I don't want to offend any of my students. But have you ever wanted to know what a root looks like when it grows? Well, we have the project here. What we have is up to 48 different root uh, cultures can be put in here. And with the XYZ uh, gantry that we have, student team can pick these up, 
move them over to the scanner and scan these. So we're doing this for a company that does biological science so that they can measure and monitor root growth. So this is a very uh, 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 good team in terms of electrical, mechanical, manufacturing, automation students all working collaboratively on to, uh, together. And this has kind of worked out very well. The students have got it working uh, super. This is another great project we have. Uh, have you ever wondered why a valve doesn't leak? One of the reasons is because of an O-ring. An O-ring is a ring which would go around the perimeter here to stop the thing from leaking. So what we have here is a setup where we can test multiple O-rings uh, under static and dynamic conditions by pressurizing them. So we have both electrical, mechanical, manufacturing, and industrial engineering technology students working on this project together. The reason we have such a diverse group is not only is there a double E, a mechanical and a manufacturing component, but there's also a supply chain or an IE component to this that the technology students have to have because the company needs to know what the best materials are to build and manufacture O-rings. So the supply chain students would have to figure out where to get those materials from. So we can also cold soak these down to minus 40 degrees centigrade right here. We also can do material testing on these so we can understand what the material properties are of each of the O-rings before we do the dynamic and static testing. This is a pretty cool project to watch. It is a little noisy. Uh, have you ever wondered how a hip replacement is made? Uh, actually, this is the instrument that a surgeon would use to actually pound the hip plate replacement into your socket. But the problem we want to do is we want to simulate here with this machine how a surgeon would actually use this instrument. Because we also have it where it can wobble, which simulates how a surgeon might actually not hold it correctly. Uh, and get some uh, vibration in. So we can have a calibrated hammer here so we can repeatedly test this for several cycles so that we can determine how many strikes a surgeon would have to have before they can seat the, uh, the hip replacement into the bone. Senior capstone in the School of Engineering Technology is very important to the student's success. They're working with real companies on a project that the industry provides for up to a full academic year. They're working with the industry companies on the project as a partner, so it's not something they do by themselves, but weekly they're working with the companies and they have definite deliverables. Most of these will go into production or into possibly new products for the companies. This gives the students a great leg up when they're going into the career because they've already had an industry experience and they generally have something that they can talk about when they're going to the interview, which helps those students get that first job. Hi, I'm Gazdam. We are here at uh, Mechanical Engineering Technology 143 Materials and Processes Laboratories. This is a course that our mechanical engineering technology students, industrial engineering technology students, and supply chain management students take, usually during their freshman or sophomore years. And this is a course that is pretty exciting for our students because they do have the chance to be able to learn by doing. They do multiple different activities, including sand casting, different forms of sand casting, foam casting. They do welding, which is pretty exciting. Uh, we also do soldering, pipe soldering, we do oxy-fuel cutting, so it is pretty dynamic. It gives them the chance to be able to stay in sync with what the theory is given. So my students seem to be having a lot of fun. So this furnace is one of the examples to cool equipment that we utilize in these labs. This is an example of a propeller mold that we utilize for the sand casting. And right there you can see the wheels that we are casting. So this furnace is melting the alloys that we are utilizing for the casting. And if you can come over here, I will show you the stations that our students are using to prepare the molds for the sand casting. And they can be divided into different groups. And this is a station where we test the sand for the sand casting because there are certain regulations that we would like the sand to be in terms of moisture content, in terms of compactability. So this is where we sift our sand and we do the 
oxy fuel cutting in the same stations as well. And we do have a welding lab where we practice welding. Um, we are not giving welding certificates, if you will, but our students get the experience to be able to do it in person and see how difficult yet enjoyable a process welding is. So I like this course and my students like it because um, we are teaching the basic conventional processes for the foundry that is a very important fundamental for engineers. And then we just move on to more uh, innovative additive manufacturing. So they will get the chance to be exposed a little bit to all different sorts of processes and materials we are utilizing. Thanks for spending some time with us. We hope to see you here in the School of Engineering Technology at Purdue University.